Hi and welcome. In this video, we are going to discuss about blocking in SQL Server. What is blocking? How to find a blocking? And what are the steps to troubleshoot blocking? Before you watch this video, I would recommend you to watch my previous videos, which are locking modes, locking resources, and what is blocking in SQL Server. To understand the locking mechanism that is present in SQL Server, because Blocking is caused because of locking mechanism. What is a blocking in SQL Server? It is an unavoidable and by design characteristic of any RDBMS with log based concurrency. Blocking is a state of it that starts when one process has acquired a lock on a resource and then another process wants to lock the same resource. Let's say I have a database and inside this database I have a table. A user has come and he wants to access this database. He wants to update one row inside this table. SQL Server will grant him a lock to access this resource. At the same time, another user has come and he also wants to access this database. He wants to just read the data inside this table. SQL Server will not allow this user to read the database or to read the table because it has an exclusive lock acquired by user 1. So user 2 will be asked to wait until the lock is released by user 1. And we can call this situation as blocking because user2 is being blocked by user1. The user1 transaction is not yet committed or rolled back. It is a open transaction. Once the transaction is completed successfully by user1, the lock will be released and user2 can access the resource without any blocking. User2 will acquire its own lock and he can access the resource. Is SQL Server blocking good or bad? Blocking is quite normal in SQL Server, but it can also create a problem. Blocks normally resolve themselves without any noticeable effect on performance. Sometimes they can also cause performance to degrade either because the initial process locks the resource for an extended period of time before releasing it or because initial process does not release the resource at all, which makes the resources inaccessible until the block is resolved manually. Blocks of longer duration can create chains where a block process can block additional process and so on. If you see here, user2 is being blocked by user1 and user3 is being blocked by user2 and user4 is being blocked by user3 and so on, which is creating a blocking chain and that can cause a performance degradation. So the concern here is not with blocking but rather excessive blocking and blocking chains. How to find blockings and troubleshoot them. I am going to show you four different ways on how to find blocking in SQL Server. Standard reports, activity monitor, extended events, some dynamic management views and stored procedures. Let me switch to SSMS. First I have to create a blocking here. I have taken session 52 and I am updating the table. This transaction is not yet committed or rolled back. Meanwhile, I have opened another transaction in session 54 and I am trying to read the records from the same resource, I mean from the same table. Now the session 54 is being blocked by session 52. So how do we check the blocking session? The first thing is, as I told there are four different ways which I am going to discuss starting with standard reports activity or blocking transaction under reports here it will show all blocking transaction information if there are no blocking transaction it will show no blocking transactions existing like that and you can see here session id 52 this session id 52 is the blocking session so to know about the block sessions you can just expand this transaction id and you will get the block transaction if you see the previous window we are just using select statement to read the record from the table and it also displays the start time when the session or the transaction has started and uh, the session id of the block transaction and the sql statement and second method, we can also check this under activity monitor. 
just expand the process here and you will get the information of blocking session you can see the block by column where session id 52 is the blocking session when compared to standard reports it gives some additional information like login name command and wait type what wait type we have application name and for how long the session is waiting and if you want to kill this session you can just right click and you can kill the process but don't simply go ahead and kill the process because it will have an adverse effect on the transactions only after proper troubleshooting and after getting confirmation from the application team we have to kill the process next we'll see some system procedures system stored procedures and dmvs to find blocking sp underscore who is a system stored procedure that provides information about current users sessions and process here in our case we can refer to block by column to know the blocking sessions you can see here session 54 spid 54 is being blocked by session 52 we have another stored procedure sp underscore who to which is not documented but it provides some additional information such as program name cpu time disk io and the command and for blocking you can refer to block by column where it lists the spid that is blocking in our case session 54 is being blocked by session 52 and the program name is microsoft sql server management studio we can also check the blocking information in sys dot process where block is not equal to zero if you execute this you will get the spid 54 that is being blocked by spid 52 and you can see the wait type here and also some additional information is available here you can refer to the program name here microsoft sql server management studio and host name here and the command and the login name okay apart from this we have some dmvs sys dot dm underscore os underscore waiting underscore tasks this also gives blocking information you can see session 54 is being blocked by session 52 with the wait duration in milliseconds and with the wait type and we also have another stored procedure sp underscore who is active this we will discuss in troubleshooting part next we will see how to create a extended event session that reports the blocking process so before we create a session we need to enable one server property that is block process threshold option which is in disabled state by default we have to use sp underscore configure system procedure to enable this option if this option is not displayed to you you have to first open the advanced option using this sp underscore configure show advanced option one and then use reconfigure statement here I have already done this so that's the reason this is displaying here so now I need to enable this option you can see by default it is in disabled state the run value is 0 and configured value is also 0 so I just need to here I want to specify phi phi indicates if any process that is blocking for more than 5 seconds it will generate a report I will show you that in a while. So Microsoft recommends to keep this value for at least 5 seconds. Reconfigure. Now check. Block threshold value is 5. I am setting this value as 5 for just testing purpose. You can even lower the value or you can even increase this value depending upon your environment let us create an extended event you can see here under management you have extended events under that you have sessions right click on session and launch new session wizard 
give any name blocking let me give as blocking next do not use a template select this option next here in the event library search for blocking or blocked there are many events available but we are interested in capturing the blocking you can see here you have an option blocked underscore process underscore report and this is a description for that move this option to right side this is a selected event and finish close it now you can see there is a session with blocking it is currently in stop state we have not yet started the session you can see the red color mark here it is not yet started to start the session right click on this blocking and start the session the session is started to watch the live data again right click on this blocking session and select watch live data and you can see the report is generated for every 5 seconds it will generate a new report because if you remember we have selected the blocking threshold option uh, limit as 5 seconds and you will see the details here the field database id database name duration and this is in microseconds the duration and uh, to view the extra information you can just double click on this block process you will get an xml format of the data here you will find all the blocking process and blocked process this is your blocked process our block process is session 54 and blocking process is session 52 you also get the statement that is running in both the sessions and what is the status whether it is running or suspended what is the uh, last access date and time along with the login name and uh, the client app what is the isolation level and there are many options or events that are captured here and same thing for the blocked process also sorry blocking process as well you can see this is a statement that i am running in the blocking session which is my session 52 and this is a statement that i am running in blocked process which is under session 54 we can also save this data by going to properties of the session and then go to data storage click on add and from the type you need to select event file and here you can select the your file destination and you can click ok so for every report that is going to be generated it will be saved under this location ok and after the report generation is completed you can stop the session so this is how we capture blocking information using extended events next we'll see the troubleshooting part how to troubleshoot blocking these are the four steps which microsoft is recommending the first step is identify the main blocking session this we have already seen just now the demo part and second we have to find the query and transaction that is causing the blocking and third we have to understand and analyze why the blocking occurs for a prolonged period and then resolve blocking issue by redesigning the query and transaction so you can optimize your query like breaking long transaction into multiple smaller ones and keep the st stats up to date for troubleshooting blocking we have gone through few stored procedures and dmvs and also some GUI methods like extended events, activity monitor and standard reports. I am going to show you one stored procedure which is sp underscore who is active which gives much more useful information which will be very helpful in resolving blocking. As we already know the session 52 is blocking 
session 54 the blocking information we get from the stored procedures we have already seen this in the uh, previous demos now i am going to discuss one more stored procedure sp underscore who is active this is not inbuilt in sql server this was developed by adam mechanic he is a data architect and database performance specialist you can download this stored procedure from this website i will share you this link in the description you can download the script from there and this is the uh, source code i have already downloaded this is a stored procedure you just need to copy this and execute in the ssms i have already executed the script in the sql server management studio so once i run this stored procedure it will display the duration this is the session 52 duration and this is session 54 duration it will give you the query that is running in the session and it will give you the login name cpu blocking session id and the status how much percentage the query is completed generally this this query will list you all the active transactions that are running in your sql server okay you can click on this sql text and you will get the query that is running in that session okay and uh, if you want to know what are the logs that are imposed by this session you can use at the rate get logs equal to 1 and you can get the log information i mean what log mode that has been imposed on a resource you can see here at the page level it has an intent exclusive log at row level it has an exclusive log and it has logged only single row so this type of information also you get from the stored procedure dbcc input buffer of spid this query will give you what is the text or uh, sql query that is running in that session for suppose i want to find out what query is running in session 52 which is my blocking session I can run this query and I will get the transaction or the SQL statement that is running here. If you want to kill the blocking session, you can just use kill and mention the SPID of the blocking transaction and the session is killed, the block session will be released. See the session 54 is executed now. As I told, do not just go ahead and kill the blocking session after proper troubleshooting and confirmation from the application team this killing blocking session is the last option that you can do in order to release the blocked sessions the website links and the videos that are mentioned in this video will be provided in the video description along with the t sql scripts that's all in this video if you like the video please hit the like button do share and subscribe for more videos We'll meet again in our next video. Thank you.